We're going to go live right now to Mississauga, where Health Minister Mark Holland is making an announcement at Credit Valley Hospital. And look, folks, I don't have to tell you, I look around and I see so many faces uh, who are directly involved in delivering health care um, here in Mississauga, uh, just how difficult it was. You know, uh, when you go back to the beginning of the pandemic not so many uh, years ago, uh, it was such a deep trauma, I think, for our whole country, uh, but it was particularly so for those that were in health care. And uh, I was having a, an opportunity to talk uh, to Terry just about how things were 18 months ago. Uh, just uh, how difficult it was. Uh, the weight of the world had been on nurses, had been on doctors, on uh, personal support workers, and that weight uh, was nearly crushing. And so it was a time of, uh, of, of real difficulty 18 months ago. Uh, and we knew we have to step in. So I want to tell you uh, that you can feel that change coming, but I want to talk about it in some very explicit ways. I'll start with uh, the investments that we're making across the country uh, in health care. $200 billion over the next 10 years. And I have been going around in every province and in territory. We were here a few weeks ago uh, in, in uh, Toronto for the Ontario announcement, talking about not only how that money is going to go in, not only how it's incremental to the provincials, uh, provincial plans already there, but having key indicators so that you can see that progress built into the system, so that there's accountability to the money that's been put in. And so too, as we're making those investments in health workforce, uh, in helping support nursing, in helping make sure that we, and I'll come to nursing in just a second, we also got to be upstream. You know, Terry was talking about uh, not thinking enough in our system about uh, what is upstream, and I couldn't agree more. Uh, that's why on Thursday I was so proud to be with my colleagues to make an announcement on Pharmacare, making sure that every Canadian everywhere in the country has access uh, without cost to their diabetes drugs that they need and for the devices and apparatus for their health. It's not only a fundamental issue of social justice, it is going to make a massive difference uh, for preventative health. Uh, for contraceptives, Contraceptives, again, you know, you look at BC, which started with a universal contraceptive plan. That actually has now been saving them more money than they spend. And this is the thing, when we can get ahead of the crisis and we can move down the stream, then these investments can not only improve health outcomes, but can reduce costs. That's what dental care is about, making sure that 9 million Canadians who don't have dental care will have dental care. But today we're talking uh, about nursing in particular around retention. You know, we're doing extraordinary things to recognize, uh, uh, recognize foreign credentials, to help bring folks to this country to help, but you can't fix a problem unless you're holding the people you have. Uh, and it was said in our discussion earlier how important it is to make sure that that work is joyful. Uh, and it hasn't felt joyful for a little while. The amount that's being placed on people's shoulders is, uh, is incredibly difficult. So we need to change that paradigm in two ways. Uh, and part of it is in the nursing retool, uh, retention toolkit that, uh, that Dr. Chapman has led in consultation with folks across the country to make sure there's a plan, tools and resources for a coordinated approach where you don't have to reinvent the wheel every time to know well, how we can do everything we can to hold on to our best talent. And the second thing is to make sure in the investments we're, we're making with a, a health work for, uh, with a, a center of excellence that we're projecting the health needs in the future. So that if you're a young nurse coming into the profession today, you don't face that cycle. Listening to nurses who've been around for 20 and 30 years talking about the ebbs and flows from good times into crisis, into crisis back to good times, we can't do that anymore. That's way too damaging. No, we can't predict the next pandemic. We can't predict the next health crisis, but we can ensure the flexibility exists within our system so that it's never in a state of crisis again. Because those who go into health, particularly nurses, uh, go into be the joy of service. And the last thing you need to be worrying about when you're worrying about a patient is how are you going to make it through the day? How are you going to be given enough hours to spend with your family? How are you going to be given enough room to continue to have the compassion to be able to care for others if the system isn't caring for you? And so I want to speak, and I'm going to turn it over to Lee here to talk the specifics of the nursing retention toolkit that we're announcing today. But I want to say that the spirit that I saw in Charlottetown when all health ministers got together uh, from across the country, 
and ask the question that health care workers asked in the darkest days of the pandemic. How do we pull in one direction? How do we set aside We've been listening to Health Minister Mark Holland making an announcement at Credit Valley Hospital.